Hello and welcome to another Router Gods video. My name is Humphrey Chung. Today is February 12th, 2014. We're going to dive a little bit deeper into the Micronics workbook. Narbic does offer a sample of his Foundations workbook on his website. You can click on it, download it, and take a look. And what we're going to do in this video is we're going to take a look at that sample workbook. We're going to take a look at the table of contents, how he has things organized. We're going to take a look at the topology, how he asked the question, and also how he does the answers. I wasn't able to show you this in the previous video, getting the most out of your Narbic training in your workbooks, and that was because my workbooks are lock lizard protected, so it bombs out when I try to record the screen. Amazingly enough, they do seem to work just fine if you use Google Hangouts, so it plays nice with Google Hangouts, but with Camtasia, it doesn't. In the next video, what I'm going to do is actually walk you through doing one particular problem, and I'll show you exactly how I approach studying each problem or each task in his workbook. So, wasn't able to do that in the previous video because that would have just made the video way too long. Okay, let's go into micronicstraining.com. That's Narbic's website. Then to get the sample, you're going to go to routing and switching, workbooks, Come on, workbooks. Why aren't you coming up? There we go. Okay, workbooks, CCIE Foundations. And when you scroll down, you're going to see a link to micronics.nl. There's a story behind this website. I'll let uh, Narvik explain it in his boot camp because he gives the story. Simply select that link, paste that into a new tab, and you will get a wonderful PDF that you can download if you wish, or just view it uh, inside the browser, that's fine. Now, first thing you'll notice, this is volume one. All of his workbooks have two volumes, Foundations, volume one, volume two, Advanced Routing Switching, volume one, volume two, and Bootcamp, volume one, and volume two. Reason for the two volumes is because you can't throw all of the topics inside a single workbook. The workbook would just be too massive. So he cuts it off. I think in foundations, he cuts it off at redistribution. So everything from the topology and switching all the way to redistribution is volume one. And then volume two has the more crazy stuff, the more advanced topics. The cutoff point in advanced dragging and switching in advanced boot camp is a little, little different. Uh, there is no set cutoff point. It's just whenever he feels like the workbook is getting too big, then he makes it into volume two. But it's not a big deal. Okay, let's take a look at the table of contents. Let's see what's in this guy. So you'll see that he explains, we've got a section for the logical and physical topology. Very, very important because this is the first part that people get, their minds get blown when they're coming from a CCNP. A lot of times in CCNA and CCNP, your topology and your hardware layout is the same. So if you see two routers connected, you know, router one connected router two, that's all you have in the topology. That's what you're dealing with. In the CCIE world, if you see router one connected to router two, uh, there could be a whole bunch of stuff in the middle that you may not be aware of or you may not uh, have in that particular topology map. So that's something that people have to kind of wrap their heads around. Uh, also, from jumping from CCNP to CCIE, one thing I didn't talk about that much in the previous video is if you've signed up to go to Narbix Bootcamp, what you're looking at here, Foundations, do the Foundations workbook, Volume 1 and Volume 2, both, both volumes, do the Foundations workbook before you go to his boot camp. I can't stress that enough. To get the most out of his boot camp, do foundations. He even tells you that before you sign up. Uh, I think when you get the email, I'll have to look it up, but when you get the sign up email, it tells you here's your foundations workbook. Uh, you might want to do this before you attend the boot camp. If you do foundations a couple times, all the all the questions in the labs before the boot camp, you will be ahead of 90% of the people in that boot camp. You will be less stressed. You'll probably kick ass on the two assessments. Uh, I know I did. I, I did uh, the foundations uh, and also INE stuff before and uh, I had a pretty good time. 
pretty fun. Other people who did not do any of the foundations or maybe only a couple exercises had a very rough time. So uh, just a fair warning, warning to you guys. Okay, let's take a look at the sections, logical or physical. We have switching, we have frame relay, this is kind of standard. Of course, frame relay is disappearing in version 5, but if you're rushing for version 4, you're still going to have it. Um, now, Narbic tries to put frame relay in every one of his questions so that at the end of it, at the end of the foundation's workbook, you are no longer afraid of frame relay. It's not a, it's not a big deal. Got RIP, EIGP, so these are our routing protocols, OSPF, some redistribution, some BGP, IPv6, Q, wonderful QoS, and IP services. So, you know, the kind of the core stuff all the way up to BGP and IPv6. Actually, Cisco's CCIE lab right now considers everything up to IPv6 as core. So, you know, that's, that's about uh, your core is will actually get you not even 50% of the test now. So that's a completely different video, but uh, you know, you've heard, you might have heard before from other places that uh, if, if I'm good in core, I don't have to worry about this test. That is completely wrong. If you're 100% on the core and that's it, you're gonna fail this test because 100% of the core may get you 47, 48% of the points, and then the rest is gonna be advanced topics. So another warning to you. Okay, so that's kind of the layout. Uh, this is a standard, pretty much a standard layout uh, across all workbooks, whether it's IP Expert or INE. They kind of go through this format where you start with layer two, then you go through the routing protocols, then you go into the advanced stuff. And IPv6 multicast is kind of thrown in the middle there. So pretty normal layout. Let's go down, let's get to, let's, do, let's get to OSPF. Now the reason we're going to take a look at OSPF, because uh, I like OSPF, but also if you want to learn more about OSPF, Narbic is the guy because I consider OSPF to be his specialty. Uh, in, in fact, in the boot camp, uh, the days that he spends talking about OSPF, uh, you may think you know everything about OSPF, but during the first 30 minutes of his OSPF talk, and it, it goes on for hours, but he, he pretty much spends a whole day on it. But uh, in the first 30 minutes of the OSPF, you will realize that you knew nothing about OSPF, that Norbic will just kick your ass on it. So here's a sample problem, OSPF authentication. You can see that he gives a topology. So one difference between him and the other vendors is in a lot of these labs, in a lot of these tasks, you're not dealing with a lot of routers. You're dealing with, you know, so here's five. Five is actually a lot for, for Narbic stuff. So you know, it's five routers, four routers is kind of the, you know, on the high side, usually it's going to be somewhere like three to four routers. Of course, once you get into MPLS and the, t the more difficult topics, you're going to be using 10, 11 devices. So it gets pretty crazy. But up until then, uh, you know, four or five is, is kind of it's kind of there. You can kind of look at uh, the color scheme here. You can see things are in red, or purple, brown, and that's kind of the normal thing for Narvik. He likes using different colors. You can also kind of see his numbering scheme, you know, 12, 110, slash 24s. You know, the loopbacks are all ones, all twos, slash 24s. This is normal on the foundation level. He doesn't hit you too much with crazy subnetting on foundation and even advanced running the switching, the second, uh, the second volume or the second set of workbooks. Where he really gets pretty evil is in the advanced boot camp workbook that you get during the boot camp. So he kind of saves that for later. And trust me, if you do the RIP lab in his advanced boot camp workbook, you're going to be tearing your eyes out because the subnet mass in there are things that like you, like who who really deals with uh, slash 27s most of the time you know it's, it's so here foundations easy slash 24 slash 32s life is good and as you can see uh, i was talking about the the frame relay stuff we got frame relay we got three frame relay clouds so but you know by the time you get to ospf and foundation you're not going to worry about frame relay you'll you'll be hit with it 
you've been hit with it in the frame relay section, obviously, and also in RIP and EIGRP, so not a big deal here. Let's scroll down a little bit. He gives you the task. Now, another thing with con configuring the task, follow the directions exactly. Because when I first got these workbooks, I was I was kind of in I and E mode. I and E, they don't tell you everything, so you have to read between the lines. Narbic pretty much tells you everything, so if you read behind between the lines and you assume something and you type something in, it will probably re be wrong. So things like trying to configure ahead, you know, you'll you'll con you'll say, oh well, my next step would have been this, and you type something in. And you'll find out that uh, no, that that was going to be in task four, and you screwed it up. So another thing for you, Narvik pretty much takes you by the hand and walks you through the task. So notice it says configure the routers based on the above diagram. That's pretty easy. What he's telling you to do is pop in IP addresses everywhere, and you can see he's telling you exactly on R1. This is what you would type in. So the default interface there, that's to get rid of any lingering configuration. If you're coming in from an old lab, you can see that he's typing in, uh, he wants you to type in the in-cap frame to start the frame relay. We're going to start up point to point. No shut. Notice the no is in red to kind of guide your eyes to, like kind of like, this is important. Then we go into R2 and R3. Right? It gives you the exact commands to type in. R4, R5, and then what's nice is the verification part. So he's like, okay, you have typed all this in. How do you verify it? And you're going to use ping commands, you know, and other things. You're going to do show commands. You're going to have, like, show IP OSPF when you start doing OSPF stuff. And so here, task two, configure frame relay interfaces and loopbacks. Make sure the out router ID is not based on any IP address. So here he's saying, go on all the routers, type this in, type in this router OSPF command. So you notice he tells you exactly what to type in. And then the verification and the expected output. So this is very, very nice. Also, once again, we're getting into the different colors portion. He gives you some, some extra information. Yeah. This is going to be important when you start dealing with the output, especially down here. We've got a debug here that is saying to, to verify or to, to set up this task. You know, run this debug command. You should be seeing this output. He explains what that output is. So it's very good. Unlike some other workbooks, which are all in one color, and uh, you know, sometimes there's a, some gaps in the, uh, the verification part. I was like, well, we verified on routers 1 and 2, what happened to router 3, 4, and 5? This thing doesn't work, but Narbic is going to walk you through all of this. All right, so that's pretty much it for how he approaches the task. You can see that he tells you exactly what to do. He tells you uh, there's no, no problems in seeing the output. Things are highlighted here. You can see they're highlighted in yellow. Things are different colors. Topologies tend to be very simple, and in fact, in some of this, some of these more advanced things, configure basic IPv6, two routers, bam, right? So, in our next video, I'm going to tell you how to approach these tasks, how to study for them, what to do the first couple times you do a particular lab, and how to keep track of your notes, how to uh, look at the Cisco documentation, and how to organize things for further study. Thanks for watching.